My name is Heather Ritchie, I'm from the School of the Built Environment in the University of Ulster. Today I'm going to be talking on giving some views of stakeholder engagement from a marine planning perspective. And really what my uh, PhD research was really trying to do was actually to gather and analyse stakeholder perspectives of what they thought about marine spatial planning in terms of where they think it should be going. And in that I was trying to capture that while stakeholders may agree that marine space planning is effectively a good thing to do, because there are so many different sort of viewpoints and opinions and epistemological stances and lots of different power influences in the process, people are going to have different perspectives. I guess so if we think about the actual starting point for stakeholder engagement in the marine environment, we realise that the marine environment is very, very different to what we have on the land. It's going to be much more complex. And I guess really it's because of the sort of physical and dimensional differences that we have in the marine environment. We have, when we're thinking about land use ownership, we think about how the land is very much physically parceled up into property rights and property ownership. And of course, when we're thinking about the marine environment, there is no such thing really as, as physical boundaries. The marine environment actually resists these conditions. There are no fences effectively. And then there's the concept of Mari Libram, which really means the, the freedom of the seas. It's a real doctrine. It's, it's um, traditionally known as you can fish where you want to fish, you can sail where you want to sail. And really this whole doctrine is being curtailed by marine spatial planning as a form of state intervention. What we're thinking about is that government essentially seem to be trying to replicate what we've got from a land use planning perspective and I'm ultimately trying to plan in a similar sort of way for the marine environment. And in terms of their views on stakeholder engagement for marine spatial planning, they seem to be really seeking that all stakeholders will be in involved through forms of public consultation and that's very much a statutory mechanism that we've really developed up from the land. And they don't really seem to be open to really looking at sort of new innovative ways of how we can begin to plan for the sea in a slightly different way. When we're thinking about this idea of trying to get all stakeholders gathered around the table, each and every one of them, and trying to get them to come to some sort of an agreement and consensus, really must come with, with a caveat. I think that from what we know our experiences in land use planning is that consensus is unrealistic and actually quite unachievable in practice. It's said to be utopian, naive, open to abuse by more powerful stakeholders. And often the result is a very much watered down, lowest common denominator effect. And for some stakeholders, consensus can mean losing out in terms of more weaker stakeholders. It, consensus can leave stakeholders feeling antagonised and frustrated and ultimately I think that sometimes government use this idea of, of reaching a consensus as a way of creating less conflict among the stakeholders, getting the legislation passed quite quickly. In terms of my own research then on stakeholder perspectives, as I've said I used a case study location looking at the Irish Sea region. And I was trying to identify as many stakeholders as possible that were really involved in marine spatial planning and how it will really move forward. So they might have been from NGOs, they might have been working on marine policies, they might have been civil servants involved in fisheries, involved in marine technology. So I was trying to reach a really far and wide spectrum of stakeholders. And this was really because I was trying to gather their perspectives. Some of the stakeholders really wanted a full and open form of stakeholder engagement, whereas the rest of the stakeholders really wanted a much more selective form of stakeholder engagement to the point where they could actually decide who to have in and who to have out. There were tr issues with trust in government as well as we've seen. And then finally there was the types of knowledge. Most of the stakeholders really advocated that we should be using as many types of knowledge as possible. So that may be in terms of lay knowledge, traditional knowledge, expert knowledge and scientific knowledge. However, there were some of the stakeholders that said we should simply be relying on expert knowledge and scientific knowledge and others relying just simply on sort of traditional knowledge and local knowledge. But while all stakeholders believe that marine spatial planning is essentially a good thing, there were so many different perspectives, diverse opinions and subjective viewpoints that came out. 
Often these could actually be read as quite contentious at times and could even lead to some antagonism between stakeholders. In practice, from what we already know, from what the government has been saying about trying to create open engagement, getting all stakeholders involved and getting everybody around the table to come to an agreed consensus, actually in practice it's quite unrealistic and potentially uncounterproductive for this to happen. And I think really what we need is some different ways about how we think about engaging with stakeholders from marine spatial planning. An alternative theory that's currently developed in planning is around a concept called agonism and adopting agonistic approaches. It values contest and conflict and frustration as an actual tool that can be used to more effectively deal with planning disputes. It forces stakeholders to come to some sort of agreeance to a settlement. It encourages them to set their differences aside and actually agree to disagree in some matters. And really what one of the values about agonism is that it actually accepts that sometimes antagonism, frustration and conflict cannot be eliminated from the process. In terms of the reflections and moving forward from this presentation, I hope that I will have shown some new insights into the complexity of stakeholder engagement in the marine spatial environment. And I hope that I have managed to convey that stakeholder engagement in the marine environment is very much differentiated from what we're used to on the land. And I think that from what I've been saying about government expecting all stakeholders to come to the table and to reach some sort of agreement and consensus is actually quite unrealistic in practice. And it can still be very democratic as well, as long as we give all stakeholders a right to, to be involved and give some stakeholders who aren't maybe directly involved some form of feedback and consultation to still be involved. By building these safeguards into the process, we can then still ensure that it is productive and legitimate.